Good morning, everybody. Thanks for waiting. Connor's not here yet. He'll be here in a minute. Mm -hmm. Dana, uh, obviously there's been a lot of talk coming into this that there were strained relations between you and Connor or the UFC and Connor. Um, I'm just curious. I mean, the guy's half hour late for a major press conference. We were cool till this. <laughs> yeah, no, we're good. We're good. So was that, was there too much made of that? Or do you feel like the guy's trying to send you a message right now? Or what's, I mean, what's, do you what? Think well? There he is. Uh, no, I, ask him. I don't know. <laughs> well, Connor, uh, obviously, welcome to the press conference. Uh, I just did want to ask you, I mean, certainly a, a major day here, a big press conference. You know, there's been a lot of talk that maybe there's tension between you and the, in the UFC or you see McGregor Sports and Entertainment as a brand that can be on par with the UFC or beyond that. Is, 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 is your tardiness here today any type of a message, any type of a leverage, negotiation, anything like that? No, I, I wow. New microphones and everything. 2015 was a damn good year of business. We've got the good microphones and all this year. And um, now business is phenomenal. I mean, all you gotta do is look back at last year for myself and the company. Um, there, there was nothing about tardiness. I apologize for my timekeeping. I do not wear watches to tell the time, so um, I, I operate on my own time. But I am here now and I apologize and, and here we go. Fantastic. Well, now that you are here, why was this the right fight? You certainly had a lot of options on the table. You know, defend the belt at 145, Nate's calling you out. I mean, everybody wanted to, uh, to fight you. Why was this the right fight to make? Um, you know, I chose, I chose this one because I came into this promotion as a two-weight world champion. I had always wanted to replicate that. that. That was the goal, create history, continue to create history. And, and, and this man across from me has, has a title. He has nothing else but that. He is a free TV fighter. Um, he has nothing else to offer me except that gold belt. So um, that, was, that was the simple decision. There were many other options, you know. Fra Frankie, Frankie has a little bit of desperation about him or something. I don't know. He went 0-2 uh, in lightweight, got the chance to fight for the featherweight title, and got the head slapped off him. And then now he's running around begging. And it's, it's very, it has a, a stink of desperation off of it. So I'm just going to leave him sit for a while. Nate, you know, I like the way Nate came in his last fight. The previous fight before that, he came in sloppy, really badly out of shape, whining and complaining about everything, and then came in and put on a performance like that. He went back to the bottom of the pile, but he came in this last fight in shape. Um, he played the game a little bit more, so, you know, I can give respect to that, and, and, and we'll see where it goes. But um, I will go through every single one of them. Make no mistake about it. Rafael is next, um, and that is it. More gold belts. And can I just quickly ask you how you're going to approach your weight for this? Because uh, people are seeing pictures of you, say you look bigger, maybe a little more muscular. How are you going to approach this? And are you thinking about a return to 145? Are you making sure that your body stays in a, in a position that you can defend both belts? Or is there a possibility that if you get this belt, 155 is your new home? Um, I'm, I'm an active champion. I will fight in many weight divisions. You know, as, as, as it grows and, 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 and all of this forms now, I like the sound of that 170 pound title as well. I've got to be honest with myself. Here. I feel I feel I can take down M3 gold belts. So and I feel I can I can do it by the year's end. Okay, Dana, Dana question for you and for Connor both on the timing here with him holding if he wins this fight and holds two belts, what's it, when are you going to expect him to fight at 145 again? Is are you going to put a time yeah, you're going to put a time frame on, on him on when he needs to defend that belt as well? Yeah, well, it's, it's going to, obviously this fight has to happen. We'll see what happens. L listen, when everybody asks me why I would let Connor hold two belts when we've never done it before, because Connor has kept his word on everything he said he would do, you know? Uh, you know, he was a little late to the press conference today, but other than that, he's kept his word and done everything that he said he would do since the day he set foot in here. He said he will fight four times a year. He really likes money, and I believe that he will do. I believe he will do it. So, but but no time frame on. He's going to have six months to have to. Yeah, fight listen. Him. Cut out all this sort of stuff, and I'd go through the whole roster in four months. And I tell you that right now, I'll whoop every single one of them inside four months if you cut out all this sort of shit. Bring me in, weigh me in, and I'll fight the next night and wipe out the entire game inside four months. <laughs> 
Question for Conor McGregor. Conor, UFC 200 is coming up in July. We're talking a lot about your long-range plans. You never shy away from planning for the future. Uh, if there's no you know, injury or anything like that that uh, holds you up after UFC 197, can you say you after, would fight at 200? I'll be fresh after 197. I believe I will dust half a L inside one minute. Um, he is a slower, sloppier version of Aldo. He's, a, he's like a bum version of Aldo. So I, I believe... In, in absolutely everything, I believe inside one minute I will dust him, I will exit the contest fresh, I will cash the check, I will sign the next contract for UFC 200, the brand new MGM, and we'll go again. 2015 was my year. 2016 is also my year. Every year is my fucking year. Uh, how big of a relief is it for you to not have to make that weight cut, and how do you anticipate it'll affect your performance? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty nice uh, feeling. It's a nice experience. It's steaks every day for me. Steaks for breakfast, steaks for lunch, steaks for brunch, grass fed, massaged, beef, all day long. So um, it's, pretty, it's a pretty nice feeling, and my body is reaping the uh, rewards. You know, I can, I can only imagine this, the state Rafael is in coming back to back cuts, especially he blew up before the Cerrone fight. He was extremely overweight, and he had to cut down to make that 155 pound limit. And then the king calls and says, you're up again, kid. And now he's got to do it all over again. So I, I mean, just looking at him, he's aged 25 years in, in, the, in the last two weeks. So um, I can only imagine how he's feeling, but I'm feeling damn good. And how do you anticipate it'll affect your performance, your power? Um, I feel, I feel everything, uh, everything will be the same. I mean, as my performance has been flawless in the featherweight division, you know. Uh, the, 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 final, the final week or two is, is, is intense. The final week is, is, is the intense. Uh, part, but I get in there, and by the time fight time comes around, I'm fresh, and I'm, I'm KOing everybody. This is this will be my fifth world title inside ten uh, in, in ten fights, um, all won by stoppage. Um, so my performance has been good. I feel going up to 155, I will be, I will be the same animal. I will be even more of an animal. You know, like my uh, coach said, you've seen him on the salads, now see him on the steaks. And Connor. Fabrício Verdun, he told us in Brazil that you try to train uh, at King's MMA for, again, for the fight against Jose Aldo. Is that true? Why would I want to train in that bum gym? <laughs> I train with my own people. I have since day one. That man needs to get his facts straight before I roll in there and buy that gym and turn it into a fucking dump. You know what I mean? <laughs> I train with my people from day one, straight last year, my teammates, the same teammates that I came up with. I'm not about that running like, like, the, like the, a lot of people in this game are. They run to different camps or that's, that's a sign of weakness for me or they leave their country. I've stayed since day one. I am loyal to my team and, and that's it. So that is incorrect. Uh, for Connor, welcome back to Las Vegas. You'll be fighting in Las Vegas again. Um, question for you is, you could be fighting in Las Vegas at UFC 200 as well. Will you get a chance to fight in, in Dublin? Do you think that, that there's an opportunity for you in 2016 to fight in your home country? I mean, I don't know. I do crave my, my, my fight, my stadium fight in Dublin. Um, but I just have to roll with the punches here, you know what I mean? I just have to... It's an operation to set up a stadium show like that. There are restrictions, there are limitations. They've pulled, um, they've pulled concerts from the venue previous, so it's a risk to go in and do something like that. When I'm just knocking them out so easily and so smoothly, just keep rolling back to back to back. I will get back to Dublin. We will do the show, but it takes, it, it takes time. This is a marathon, not a sprint, so. Um, I look forward to one day having my home country lit up with a stadium show, but it is a, it is a work in process. Another one for you. Up until this point, you've, you've sort of put Hollywood away. You said that you're not interested in that, that your focus is on fighting. Prior to your last fight, your manager kind of said that that might change this year. You put up something on Instagram of you in maybe your driveway or something saying you were maybe trying some stuff out for a Hollywood film. Is this the year that, that we see you kind of break over into that side of things? Um, you know, acting, I'm not crazy about acting, but I sure am crazy about collecting. So, you know, when they come at me with these offers and these opportunities to get in, say hello, cash a check and bounce, 
And then also on the backdrop, use it as a negotiation tool that look, Hollywood's there screaming for me. You know, I'll, 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 I'll use every uh, angle of it. So we'll see where it goes. But I, am, I have offers on the table. I am deciding. But like I've said before, I truly enjoy the fight business. The fight business is my passion, not show business. I understand that you've gonna, you kind of got to juggle both in, in, in certain aspects of this game. But I, I am involved in the fight, uh, fight business, and I am running the fight business. Connor, where is your belt? That's what I just noticed. Where is my damn belt? You know, this is a super fight. I look up on that poster. I see myself tucked in the back there. I see a guy who has his last gate was 1.7 million. Um, he fought on free TV. He's never brought a dime to the company. Um, he's never made a dime yet. He is sitting there on the front of my poster. Um, I think that's a department that needs to be looked at. Somebody sleeping on the job. Where are, this is a super fight. Where are all these historic images? These, these, are, these are posters that will be looked back on long after it's all said and done, and then you've got to look back on that absolute garbage. So, you know, I, I think I might have to go in, into that department because they must be getting comfortable in that poster department. They want to get their act together and start doing their damn job, you know what I mean? This, the posters are, are a significant part of the sports history. I mean, look through the years of all the great historic posters that the UFC has produced. But I feel someone sleeping on the job in that department, and I will have to dip my nose and find out who and eliminate it. Dana, do you have a response to that? Where is his belt right now? He's challenging for the 155-pound belt. Everybody knows that. He's challenging for this belt. His belt isn't on the line. If he loses in this fight, he's still the 145-pound champion. I would think, you know, with Connor going for a second title, that that would make this... An historic fight, no matter what. Just, you know, that the drama of him trying to get a second belt. Putting Holly and Misha on, which is going to be a big fight on its own, I mean, you could probably have set that aside given the reaction that Holly got. And oh, it, it no would doubt. have been a, a pay per view headliner itself. So, d what was the thought process in putting this fight on with, you know, Connor and. I, uh, I wanted Holly on the fight. She has Irish blood. Um, <laughs> it was an honor to have Holly compete on so this fight. Was that what it was? In front of the <laughs> Irish fans. <laughs> Well, I, I think, you know, obviously you want to stack the card and, 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 and timing, too. Timing was right for, for both of these guys to be on this card. And, and Connor, just to ask you, like, you looked last year in uh, Ronda's two fights uh, with Holly and with Beche, and then obviously your fights, you know, did really, really big numbers. Do you think this is the new normal for the UFC? It used to be that one time a year, maybe you would get a wrestling or a boxing or an MMA pay-per-view, do that big number. Now it seems like, you know, there's been four or five, you know, times a year. Well, that it's, cer it's, certainly, it's certainly the new normal for me, but I continue. Uh, I, I hold every record in the game. I am simply breaking my own records now at this stage. So um, I am out on my own. I am in a league of my own. The game, the game is on its knees. The game must, must hold seminars every weekend to pay for their training costs. And I'm out here rallying around California in a car that spits fire, dressed like El Chapo, with anacondas on my feet. So I am in a league of my own here, ahead of everyone in the game, by a country mile. I am finding it hard to even engage with anyone in the game, because they are not on my level. Not one single individual in this company is on my level. Connor, um, question for you on uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s comments earlier this year that were racial in their tone, certainly. And uh, this year, April 24th, is the 100th anniversary of, of Irish liberty of the Republic of Ireland. Your thoughts on how that relates to your, your Irish background, what it means to you. I think to, Floyd, to needs, to, this, I think Floyd needs to learn before he opens his mouth. You don't put a man like me in a situation like that. You know, you put me in a name that's got to do with prejudice when you don't know nothing about me, you know. I am a multicultural individual. I take from all cultures. Look at me, you know what I mean? I am a product of many cultures as a young Irish man. So for, so for someone to, to, say, to put me in that, I know he wasn't saying that I am that person, but it, it put me in that bracket, and I did not appreciate that one bit. So, you know, there's people buried in the desert for less than that. So Floyd needs to understand before he speaks who he is speaking about. And that is as simple as that.